Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Human excretory system Urine formation Function of the tubules Mechanism of concentration of the filtrate Micturation Role of other organs in excretion Disorders of the excretory system. Now, what are we going to talk about in excretory products and their elimination? Now, basically, we will be discussing about the excretory system. Now, the question is, what is excretory system? Now, I am very sure that we have already learned the basics of all the different processes taking place in our body and that is how we already have that introduction of excretory system. It is that process or it is that system which throws out the waste materials from our body. So, in very simple terms, this is excretory system and that is what we will discuss in this lesson. Now, the question is, where is the need or why do we want to throw out the waste materials? Just think of this scenario. What do you do when your house is all dirty? So, the floor is dirty, so it, it's all full of dirt and it's all untidy everywhere. So, what do you do? So, you start cleaning it up. How do you clean it up? Maybe with a broom or, or with a cloth, you start cleaning up stuff, you clean your furniture, you clean up everything. So what are you actually doing when you are cleaning that up? When you clean that up, you are actually trying to throw away the dirt from your house. That is how you are cleaning your house. Similarly, if you think of cleaning something like before you eat food, we tend to wash our hands. Why do we wash our hands? So that our hands get rid of any harmful substances or any waste materials or any dirt which might be present in our hand. So that is why we use a soap and then we clean it with water and we say that okay, it is all free of dirt now. So we basically are throwing away the dirt from our hands. We wash clothes in the washing machine. What do we do? The clothes are all dirty. They have maybe mud, they might have grease, they might have so many different types of dirt or whatever. So how do we clean them? We put all of them inside the washing machine. We put some detergent and a lot of water. So what happens at the end of the process? When your clothes are cleaned, the water flows out of the washing machine and the water carries all the dirt with itself and it goes out of the washing machine. So basically what is happening in case of a washing machine, so here the output, not the output I would say a byproduct is the water with dirt and here what is your output, clean clothes. So now a very similar process takes place inside our body where all the dirt inside our body are washed away along with water. So that is the process of excretion. Now you might ask that okay, in washing machine the water comes out of the pipe which carries away all the dirt. So from where does that water come out from our body carrying the dirt? So that water is nothing but urine. So the urine is that liquid or that fluid which carries away all the waste products of the body. So now in this lesson, we are going to talk about how the urine is actually formed and how urine carries different wastes along with itself. Now there are quite a few organs which are involved in this process and those organs together form the excretory system. And that is what we will study here. So with this brief introduction in mind, let us see what is excretion. As I mentioned just now, it is the process of removal of harmful metabolic wastes from an organism body. Now, one another important question that might arise in your mind is, from where does the wastes come inside our body? Like, for example, when, when I took the example of the clothes being washed in a washing machine, the clothes get dirty. 
So how do they get dirty? Because we wear those clothes and we go out and there is so much of pollution. Sometimes if uh, suppose you are wearing a cloth and you are going out and suddenly you step into a muddy water. So your clothes tend to get those mud on it. So that is how your clothes get dirty. Now the question is from where the waste products come inside our body? Now those waste products are formed as a result of the metabolic processes taking place inside our body. Because inside the body there are so many different processes taking place. For example, the digestive system, the circulatory system. So, so many different processes are there. Now as a result of all these metabolic processes, there are many waste products which are formed. And these waste products need to be removed from the body. Now, let us try to name some of the waste products. Now when I say waste product, I mean to say that that is a product of some of the processes inside our body and we do not need them anymore inside the body. So we just want to throw them out of the body. So that is our aim. Now what, let, let us talk about some of the examples of such harmful wastes which might be present in our body. Something like carbon dioxide, urea, uric acid, ammonia, Sometimes excess of water or ions like sodium, potassium, ions, even some toxic materials many a times. Now just look at them. You will get to know how they are produced. Now if you talk about carbon dioxide, we all know that carbon dioxide is a byproduct of the process of cellular respiration. So everywhere inside each and every cell carbon dioxide is produced and we do not need carbon dioxide. The body needs oxygen but not carbon dioxide. So what do we do with that carbon dioxide? We throw them out of our body. And that is why we breathe out carbon dioxide because we don't need them. So this is an example of a, meta, a waste you can say because it is not useful to the body. You talk about urea, uric acid or ammonia. Now these are all nitrogen containing wastes. You see you, if you look at their, um, so they are all nitrogenous. All of them, if you look at their structures, all of them have nitrogen in them. And from where do we get so much of nitrogen? That comes from the protein, you know, right? We have already discussed about biomolecules and we know that most of the things inside the body of a living organism is made up of proteins. When we talk about the enzymes, we talk about the hormones, they are all proteins. So proteins are there everywhere and proteins are made up of amino acids. So amino has the amine group, that is the NH group. So that means you have a lot of nitrogen inside your body in the form of the amino acids. And those nitrogen actually form compounds like urea, uric acid, or ammonia and these are all toxic to the body. They are not at all useful to the body. In fact, they are extremely harmful. So we should get rid of all these as soon as possible. So these are another category of wastes which are generally, these three are together known as nitrogenous wastes. So we will talk about them separately. Then you have water. When I say water, you might be wondering that, oh, what rubbish is this? Water is something which is essential for the survival of a living organism. So why are we saying that water is also under the category of harmful metabolic wastes? Now, when I say water, I mean to say excess water. Now, I do agree that the body needs water for its survival for the sustenance of life, but it needs water in the right amount. It doesn't need excess of water because if there is too much of water inside your body, more than what is required, in that case, what will happen? Swelling of the cells might take place because too much of water logging will happen and all the balance inside the body will get disturbed. So water is required, of course, but it is required in the right amount. So whatever excess water is present inside the body that needs to be excreted out, that needs to be thrown out of the body. So that excess water is also falls under the category of waste because we want to get rid of that. Several ions like sodium ion, potassium ion or chloride ions, they are also required by the body but only in the right amount. So excess of all these ions also need to be thrown out. Toxic materials. Now these toxic materials can also enter your body by different, by external means. For example, there is suppose you eat a food and the food has something which is harmful to your body, right? 
so it has some toxic material so those toxic material should not be present inside your body for longer because if it does it might cause a lot of harm to the body so that means those kind of toxic materials also need to be thrown out of the body so just look at all these examples these are some of the waste materials which we want to get rid of so excretion is the process by which all the harmful wastes are removed from the body thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.